I'm Adam Kuyper. I'm the editor of The New Atlantis. It's a magazine, a quarterly journal about the social, political, ethical implications of modern science, technology, and medicine. In our most recent issue, we offer a report that deals with one of the most complex, sometimes even fraught, aspects of human existence, sexuality and gender. The authors are Dr. Lawrence Mayer, an epidemiologist also trained as a psychiatrist, and Dr. Paul McHugh, arguably the most important figure in American psychiatry in the last half century. What we found is that there's a, a large gap between, on the one hand, the certainty with which beliefs are held about these matters, and on the other, what a sober assessment of the science reveals. in the transgender world and the uh, world of uh, both heterosexual and homosexual life, the, the assumption that science has given us full answers and it is complete is closing off debate about uh, what further science is needed, what the nature of the contemporary science really is. The science isn't settled. Science is never settled, okay? That there's always another and better experiment and a better study to do. The claim that it is settled now that the issues such as born that way or you're fixed or it's immutable, there is no evidence from the science that those things are correct. What can science tell us about the health and mental health outcomes for people who identify as a gender other than their biological sex? Well, although the data is very limited, the data that we have is quite alarming, that people who identify as, as transgender have uh, higher rates of mental health problems and even higher rates of uh, suicidal thoughts, uh, ideation, and attempts than the general population. This is a concern to me as an epidemiologist. Would you say that overall in this entire field, human sexuality and gender identity, do you say that, generally speaking, more research is needed for these public health questions? I would say more scientifically based re research is needed. I mean, there are thousands of articles published where people express opinions and then they grab some data to support their opinion. But the sort of long-term follow-up that looked at an entire community over time and compared it to other communities, that's what we really need. What is it that has led you to look into this transgender question in the first place? Why do you care about this, th these matters and why should the rest of us? Well, I care about the welfare of children a great deal. In fact, that's probably my primary concern and I got involved when I read uh, more and more statements about the discovery that children as young as two years old were transgendered or their parents declared they were transgendered when in fact, majority of children who at some time in their life identify with members of the opposite sex actually grow out of that. The notion of gender among children is, is very, very fluid. Do we know anything about the, the different kinds of treatments and their mental health outcomes when it comes to children? No, we have very limited data because what we need is long-term follow-up data of what happens to these kids if they identify, if they're encouraged in that identification, or if they're given hormone-blocking therapies, or um, even if they have surgery. We really don't have long-term follow-up data. This is a vulnerable population, and I want to focus on their vulnerabilities. We are interested as psychiatrists in talking to people about what's going to make their life be as full as it can be. So human flourishing as, a, as the, the aim here of the therapy. Yeah, the, the aim is to make sure that people aren't 
finding themselves in a misdirection of their life that's going to keep them from flourishing as people. And the idea here is a full understanding of what it means to be human. Yes.